Hello and welcome to another episode of the Be Bold Show. My name is Sterum Katini. And I'm Crystal Jeanne. We have so much in store for you today. Coming up. People who use the human body as their canvas, also known as makeup artists. If you've ever wondered what it's like to make people feel beautiful inside and out, stay tuned for a day in the life of a makeup artist. And then Crystal and I were in Ibari where we were looking at young Ghanaians who are taking on the private sector and breaking their backs to make ends meet. So let's see what they're up to. But before all of that, we have a human rights activist Angela Dramana Abwaje from ARC Foundation this to talk about violence against women on BB Discussion. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Today we start with a Be Bold discussion. As we talked about before, we're discussing violence against women. Now, it is important for us because Be Bold is bringing education and what better way to start than to talk on this platform about violence against women. Now, I don't know how many people out there are actually watching Big Brother Africa, but this video had over 52,000 hits in just two weeks. It went absolutely viral and it really sped up a lot of discussion. Was it a right thing to do? Was it not? Everybody had comments and a lot of jokes started going on on Facebook, Twitter, any social media. But for us, I think the discussion that we want to have today is what does this show of Ghanaian society, was he justified in slapping uh, Zainab in the Big Brother house? Dirty slap. D it was a horrible one. And how does this impact our society as a whole? So before we start, let's just take a look at the video. I'm in a bathroom. No, why don't you slap me now? Don't push me. So what did you think about what we just watched? Wow, that was intense. That was seriously, seriously intense. But I think he could have handled the situation a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I saw I didn't think he should. I mean, slap her. <laughs> It was bad. Yeah. Seriously, I think it was a very dicey situation, considering how everything unfolded, and you know she was provoking him. He too, she was in a wrong in the first place for you know going into the bathroom and so forth, and then now he again was in the wrong for I guess saying in the first place that he would slap her, and she you know it was back and forth. Everyone was wrong in a certain way, but the end result was just yeah, wrong. Was I think wrong. that's for me too. Like I don't think he should have actually slapped her. He should have just taken a moment or you know just step back or just I don't know but calm the yeah, situation true, down true. And now before we go yeah. on though we do have to introduce both of you so let's just take a quick look at the two panelists sitting next to us hello my name is Mabanga Chisenga I'm from Zambia I'm currently staying in Ghana Accra and I'm studying IT at Gimpa hi I'm Charlotte I'm a student I'm studying ICT and I'm on the Bipo show do you guys think what happened was justified? Well, honestly, for me, I have mixed feelings about it because, you know, she, initially she provoked him. You know, she wanted to go into the bathroom and see something. You know, she wanted to check out Prezo initially, but then he was also bathing. She should have at least given him the respect as a man to function and be free. But his reaction to the whole thing was what was wrong for me. 
there's no way you can go up about in the street just slap slapping any girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because you know she provoked you. That's not how we should live in this modern world, in this society in Africa. Mm. He wanted to beat her up. It wasn't like he just wanted to slap her and then just move. He wanted to do a lot of things like hit her and stuff. So let's say people if people were not around then it would have been worse. So there is nothing he could say about it that could justify it. Mm. Yeah. No. Let's go into looking at what does this show um, about our African society, what implications did it have for us? Well, Africa as a whole, it has tarnished our image, our, our, our life, because this was an, an international media, television, everybody was, has been watching it, and this modern world of, of uh, social media, everybody was tweeting and Facebooking about it. And anybody who has been who was watching it will see that, oh no, Africa is not the place to go. All, already people are thinking Africa is a place where there's armed robbery and thieves and just a lot, all sorts of vices. And this doesn't do any good for us. Yeah. And do you think that it also negatively affected especially Ghana, since it was DKB that slapped uh, yeah, Zena? Yeah, it did. Because when people ask, they'll be like, which country is it from? And it's Ghana. And what he did, a lot of people were watching it. I, when I saw it, I was like, Ghanaian women are not nurtured to disrespect their husbands or something like that. But slapping her wasn't, it wasn't a good idea. He could have just left her and then come back later and then try to tell her not to do that next time. No. Yeah, because I also feel like, you know, when you do go to the Big Brother house, you're also an ambassador for your country. You, 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 you take your values and what you've learned and you, you go into this experience. So I, for me, I was like, wow, you know, you, you, also because of that, you need to think twice before you do anything, really. Yeah. But I think also, aside from even looking at your, you know, being an ambassador for your country, you're an ambassador for yourself. Yeah. You know, you, this is your career that you, yeah. whatever he was doing, comedian, whatever he was doing, that for now, the whole world will know him as DKB that slapped someone on Big Brother. <laughs> you know, you look at Chris Brown and, you know, now he has a name, Chris Breezy. Anytime <laughs> someone wants to say, you know, I'm going to slap you, they'll be like, I'll, I'll oh, Chris Breezy I'll you. Chris Breezy. Which is not good. It's bad. Like, we as young <laughs> yeah. people, we need to remember that everything we do affects our reputation. It affects uh, our brand, your, yeah. your, your, your own brand. Yeah. You know, 21st century, you cannot slap a woman for whatever reason, and expect that it'll just go free. So when, what, no matter what you're doing, what you're into, these are things you have to really think about. Don't let your anger get the best of you. Playing devil's advocate, it probably became an issue though because DKB is a man. Obviously, if it was a woman, if you were in his situation, personally, I might have slapped her too if I was in his situation. But then because I'm a woman, it'd just be a girl fight. You know, like what Crystal was just saying, if it was a girl on girl, maybe it wouldn't have been that intense. But because it is a man beating a woman, it also obviously opened up a lot of dialogue, you know, True. about domestic violence. Yeah. Um, so I just wanna have a look at what happened with, we went and visited um, a domestic violence organization that deals with it so let's just take a look at what she had to say and then we'll come right back i'm not happy about what happened but i don't want people thinking this is the it we've been talking about it for you know years and why shouldn't our voices be heard it's only when dkb slaps somebody on big brother show that it becomes like an issue you know, so yeah, that's the way I I took it. Mm. It, it. It annoyed me a little, to tell you the truth. Yes. Wow. <laughs> but do you think that it actually had a negative impact on how the rest of Africa sees Ghana? Well, I'm not sure. You know, the rest of Africa will be honest. Violence against women is rife. One out of every three women has suffered some form of physical violence from an intimate partner across Africa. In the rest of the world, it's one out of four. It's sad that it happened and on a show like that. However, I think it's also given a good opportunity for the public to discuss 
violence against women, violence against girls, the dynamics of it, the nature of it, the fact that even though, yes, some men are also facing violence, you still have large numbers of women. It's like 90 to 10 percent, you know, of women who face violence in all kinds of situations for all manner of reasons. And it's never justifiable. I think we were also discussing how sometimes because you are not necessarily in a situation of domestic violence, you don't, you're not constantly faced with that issue. So I think, and that's why I think it's also important that she said it's, in, it's a good thing that we are now discussing it because indeed it is something that happens all the time. It is something that we need to work on. It is something that affects us all. And it's basically one in three women in Ghana face domestic violence. It, it's a lot of women. So how can you go about your day and bringing up your children and creating a new generation when you're also facing this kind of violence at home? It's a problem. I'm not surprised because even back home in Zambia, you, you have uh, men, you know, not necessarily, maybe they're the breadwinners or not, but then they spend the money that they earn on useless things like drinking or just luxuries that are not needed in the house. No. And we go back home and put pressure on their wives. So I'm not surprised at the statistics. No. Okay, so now at this point, I mean, we've heard everything. We've also listened to Angela, what she's saying. You know, they always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So everything that we're talking about now, I, get, I guess we'll start with us, our generation. What can we do differently? How can we control this in such a way that we respect each other, um, regardless of the different sexes? What can we do differently? I think... Like, it starts with us, you know, the youth. This whole thing is, is, is a pathway. It should, have, should raise awareness mm -hmm. to us that this is wrong. Look at the reaction it has gotten on social media, on news, everywhere. Africa. It should stop now. You know, it's a mindset. We need to work on the mindset that we all have. What do we, what do we accept as being right, right. and wrong because if you watch on TV and you look on um, him slapping Zainab and you're thinking wow that's entertainment you're wrong that's, but yeah. that's, that's a good point that's a very good point because I was entertaining I yeah. laughed okay. you know but it's you know, not funny we so need to educate the youth what domestic violence is about like as in people living in the same house family violence and all that so they know it's not just um a wife beating or a husband beating the partner, not mm -hmm. just that. It's something that happened, like family violence too, is also known as domestic no. violence. And I think we, we can also go as far as um, bringing, like, let's say, a curriculum or uh, a, a, a subject in our educational curriculum so that mm -hmm. we can learn from the grassroots, you know. Start yeah. learning the way we learn math, English, learn about human violence and instill it, like I said, instill yeah. it in our heads and our minds that this is wrong from the grassroots. Yeah. So I think that concludes our discussion for today. Thank you so much for being with us Mabanga and Charlotte. Uh, we hope to see you back soon again. Um, yeah, that was the end of our discussion. Be bold. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that very insightful discussion, but that conversation doesn't end right there. You can join us on our social media networks on Facebook, Twitter, um, and on our website, actually, www.thebeboldshow.com, powered by Dream Oval, and you can continue telling us more about yeah. that, right? And I think one very good point that Angela pointed out is that, you know, it's, it's a sad fact that this is why we now started discussing domestic violence again, because it's something that exists already. So we need to keep the conversation going and make sure that we educate everybody so you know your rights, yeah. even at home. Yeah. Now, we didn't want to just interview Angela and hear her thoughts on DKB. We do have more about her. So let's after the break, we're going to take a look at her story.